I've spent the last couple of days comparing the 60 core M3 Ultra Max Studio with the full 80 core version. And outside of the price, there's one major issue with frankly, both of these machines, time. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment, but first we do need to talk about the price. Because last week when we looked at the 60 core M3 Ultra versus the 40 core M4 Max, that $1,500 price increase accounted for the M3 Ultra as well as an increase in RAM and storage. However, when we look at the 80 core M3 Ultra, it is also $1,500 more than the 60 core version. But the only thing you're getting for that difference is the unbinned M3 Ultra with four additional CPU cores and 20 GPU cores. Nothing else is different. So that's a very, very expensive upgrade on top of what I already argued was a probably too expensive upgrade. So first of all, let's get an idea of how these machines fit in across the spectrum of all Apple Silicon chips. You can see, obviously, no surprises here, the M3 Ultras are the fastest chips that Apple has ever made. But surprisingly, the M4 Max isn't that far behind. And given that the 32 core M3 Ultra is $3,000 more expensive, that doesn't seem like a great return. Now in Cinebench 2024, we can see the difference between the 28 and the 32 core versions. It is noticeably quicker and this score is absolutely ludicrous, off the charts nuts. So why don't I seem that excited about the M3 Ultra? Quite frankly, it's because of the M4 Max. So let's dive in and get some more detail right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Hibata and their E3 ergonomic office chair. Hibata's unique patented tri-wing lumbar design sets it apart from other chairs, offering three panels that rotate 40 degrees internally to ensure that your waist is always supported from all sides. E3 offers a simply ludicrous amount of adjustability. From the height of the rear backrest, to a four directional headrest mechanism, to a six dimensional armrest adjustment that even allows it to fold upwards and support your wrist. E3 even offers a retractable padded footrest. Perfect for a relaxing break or settling in for a long project, the footrest adds to this huge list of comfort features that make E3 the perfect ergonomic office chair. Whether you're a creative professional, you work from home, or you wanna create the ultimate gaming desk, Hibata's award-winning design has your back, literally. To learn more about the E3 ergonomic office chair, check out the link in the description below. A big thanks to Hibata for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. So let's go back to that Cinebench graph, because when we compare the 32 core M3 Ultra to the M4 Max, you'll notice that it's about 45% faster. But at more than double the price, it doesn't represent the best value. But that's not really even my main concern, because we see that across the board. In the GPU test, for example, we see a pretty similar trend. Here the 80 core M3 Ultra is less than 20% faster than the 40 core M4 Max. That's not a particularly impressive difference given that this is more than double the price. In Blender Classroom as well on the CPU test, the M4 Max at three minutes and 10 seconds is only 18 seconds behind the 32 core M3 Ultra. And again, in the GPU test, well, we discovered that the M3 Ultra is significantly faster than the M2, which doesn't have ray traced cores. Compared to the M4 Max, that savings of four seconds doesn't really seem that tempting. And that's the biggest problem with the Ultra chips. They are at their core, two Max chips fused together. And that means that you're inherently going to lose some of the scaling that is part of what makes Apple Silicon so appealing. So from the beginning, the M1 Ultra, the M2 Ultra, and now the M3 Ultra, they've all been, let's say, not the best value. But this time it's uniquely worse because at its core, this Ultra chip is a generation behind. If we pull up that GPU graph, for example, take a look at the M3 Max compared to the M4 Max. That's a three second difference, and that's just baked into the inherent inefficiency of the Ultra chip. The previous Mac Studio came with effectively an M2 Max or two M2 Maxes, and we knew that it wasn't gonna scale perfectly, but it was the same chip twice. This isn't that. And that's why the M3 Ultra feels particularly underwhelming. And that's also why 
these chips are a bit harder to recommend. It's not just that this is based on an older generation, it's the fact that the Max chips are getting good faster than the Ultra chips. But look, I don't wanna make it seem like the M3 Ultra isn't fast, because it is. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we do see a very noticeable increase in performance over the 60 core, and over the M2 Ultra, and over the M4 Max as well. And in Death Stranding, while we're only gaining 10 seconds over the M3, compared to the M4 Max, it is a significantly faster machine. The bigger problem is this. I can look at all of the graphs that I've shown you so far and say, okay, look, the M3 Ultra might be very, very expensive, but it is unquestionably the fastest machine at every single one of the tasks. It might not be that much faster, but if you want the fastest machine, this is it. Here's the problem. At $5,500, this is not a purchase that you wanna be making every year or every other year. So a lot of the people who are shopping for an M3 Ultra are probably coming from an M1 Ultra. The problem is though, the Max chips, which do come out every year, are very quickly making the Ultras obsolete. I mean, if I bring up that same Death Stranding benchmark, the M4 Max is actually beating the M2 Ultra, despite having nearly half the GPU cores. Just from going from the M2 Max to the M4 Max has made the Ultra chip look a lot less tempting. So if you really want this exact level of performance, you pretty much only just have to wait for the M5 Max chip, because at the pace that Apple's going, that thing will be almost as fast, or in some cases, maybe even faster, than this. And that's not considering applications that are already so optimized that going to these machines doesn't really give you that much. Take Final Cut Pro for example. I found that in rendering a 4K 30 minute timeline, the 80 core M3 Ultra was just one second faster than the 60 core and only 19 seconds faster than an M4 Pro, which you can get in a Mac Mini for 1300 bucks. Now where the Ultra chips really shine is in the export, and here you can see that despite being only 10 seconds faster than the 60 core M3 Ultra, it is significantly faster than the M4 Max. So if you are a video editor and export times are important, which if you're a YouTuber like me, they, they definitely are, that is a big selling point. But again, if you already have an Ultra chip, what is really enticing you to upgrade? In DaVinci Resolve, again, the 80 core M3 Ultra was just one second faster than the 60 core and just seven seconds faster than the M2 Ultra. So if you already have one of those, you probably don't need one of these. And this kind of underscores why the M3 Ultras can be tricky to recommend. Why would I pay an extra 1500 bucks over the binned M3 Ultra for video editing. You, you wouldn't, it's just not relevant. For gaming, you could make that argument because it can actually take advantage of those extra cores, but for video editing, doesn't make a lot of sense. For CPU tasks, sure, you'll get a little bit more, but is it really worth 1500 bucks for those extra four CPU cores? The problem is the M3 Ultra is just so specific in its use cases that it's hard to justify that price. And that kind of brings me back to the base model M4 Max Max Studio as a really great value proposition. Because with a few exceptions, you will find that it is mostly as fast as you could possibly want, certainly for the money. And when you look at Apple's desktop lineup, the trend is pretty much stick with the base model. The $600 M4 Mac Mini is a fantastic value. The $1,300 M4 Pro Mac Mini is a fantastic value. And the $2,000 Mac Studio is a fantastic value. But once you start paying for all these upgrades, the value declines pretty quickly. And it's just kind of weird to see Apple seemingly not care about that fact. The M3 Ultra is supposed to be a flagship chip, but they kind of set it up for failure by basing the Ultra chip on the previous generation. The M4 series has been completely out and available for months now. Why are we still using the M3 as the basis for our most powerful, most expensive chip? It just seems confusing. 
In fact, when I was booking brand deals for this video, talking to my manager, he was extremely confused by this launch. He was like, wait a minute, so are these two different computers? Why do we have M4 and M3? Is the M3 the older computer that you're comparing this new M4 one against? And I had to say, no, the M4 Max is actually older than the M3 Ultra chip. That's the new one, the more expensive one, even though it's the three instead of the fourth generation. Like, it just confused people. And for this price point, I kind of just want the latest and greatest. I wish that they had just waited until an M4 Ultra was ready, frankly. But I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments below if you think the M3 Ultra really makes any sense at all. Obviously, it is ludicrously powerful. I'm not trying to argue that it isn't. I'm just confused by the pricing, the structure, and the timing of this release. And frankly, I think that the whole ultra chip as it exists now is almost fatally flawed. Do you agree? Let me know down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.